as the sun rises over the beautiful Mozambique bush, we head out on the truck for what is sure to be an epic day of hunting. I'm hunting with Gavin Ingram of Induna Hunting Safaris and legendary dangerous game hunter JP Kleinens, and we've been set a special task for the day. It's a local village's centenary celebrations this week, and we've been tasked with taking down two buffalo cows to supply meat for the celebratory feast. Taking one buffalo is tricky enough, but two in one day is the stuff of legend, and we're all very excited. Especially Gavin, as this will be his first ever buffalo. Being a proud hunter and father, he's keen to add this big five species to his impressive list of accomplishments, and to have a great story to share with his hunting mad sons Tien and Even on his return to South Africa. However, first things first, we need to find a herd of buffalo. Despite their immense size and the fact they travel in huge herds up to 100 strong in these parts, this is wild Africa and they can prove pretty elusive. With no fences, no boundaries and no high-tech gadgets to rely on, we need to track them the old school way. But we have a not-so-secret weapon. Actually, three of them. We've stopped the truck and the guys are having a good look around. Just explain to me what, what it is that we found. Look, we're, we're driving around and we're looking for tracks and if you can see around here, there's fairly fresh uh, tracks. So what we do is we look at the tracks, uh, the trackers can determine more or less how long uh, the, the tracks were when they came past here. And then what happens is you walk around so till you find some uh, shit. Okay? When you find the shit, you can feel if it's a little bit warm. If it's the cooler it is, obviously the longer they've been here. Yeah. I mean, they physically stick their finger in there and say, listen, okay, no, 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 this is about five, six hours, and the warmer it gets, absolutely, you know. But it's, it's incredible that you can tell the time of day because they just, they, they just said six o'clock a.m., yeah. 20 buffalo yeah. came through here. Yeah. This is an incredible skill these guys have got. Yeah, you see, they absolutely, they, I want to say they're 24 7, 340 days a year they're in this felt. If, if they're not hunting, they're doing the anti-poaching. Mm -hmm. so, so they absolutely they know these animals, it's, what they do. It's like do. a sixth sense. It's, it's absolutely. They know. So, so what time is it now? It's now quarter past nine. So we're only three hours and 15 minutes behind them. So yeah. we better get on then, yeah? Come, let's go. We dive onto the truck and pick up the pace, but it isn't too long before the trackers have spotted more signs of buffalo. We're told to be ready. Let's not take any precautions. We head out on foot to follow the trackers and we soon come across the telltale signs of buffalo that even a novice like myself can see. It's a very fresh buffalo track. You can see the edges are nice and crisp. Literally two hours ago they passed straight through here. Yeah, and it's very important now, now that we get to these thicket stuff, that between the two of us we don't look for spur. That's a tracker's job. We need to look through through the little openings and that if we don't spot the buffalo although they'll know the closer we'll get they'll be more cautious mm -hmm. it's important for us to look further at 50 50 yards into the um, open or through the thickest because they're looking down mm -hmm. okay just make sure we spot the buffalo just first sure. huh? okay as we move quietly through the bush jp assures us that the herd is just beyond the long grass in front of us we move closer and closer. Okay, so as you can see, the wind keeps changing. It's blowing directly from behind us now. We're just gonna keep pushing this herd forward. We're gonna be in for a long day's walking. Now this is where it gets very dangerous. As you can see, the grass is shoulder height. Buffalo could be anywhere in here, and they know we're after them. Patience, take it slow, look for sign, and be ready to shoot. The herd stops only a short distance ahead of us, and we decide to do the same. So, the herd has stopped just a little bit further over there, maybe about 50 yards in front of us. And they started walking slowly again, so they've calmed down. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna wait 20 minutes, half an hour, just give the, the wind time to sort itself out, let them settle, and then we'll move in and take a shot. Now, hopefully, and this is the plan, Gavin's gonna set up first, get on a cow, and then once he's shot, 
hoping the cow goes down first time, the others will, others will turn and they'll come back towards us. And I'm going to take a frontal shot, hopefully, on another cow as it approaches us. That should be two down in the same location, perfect for extraction, and it means less pressure on the herd. So, um, well, that's the plan anyway. After a short break, we move into the herd. Using the natural cover, we pick our way through the bush. You can see the tails move literally about 80, 100 yards in front of us. We've got to get into position now. Gavin sets up behind one of these huge anthills. The herd is just a little way in front of us. Gavin moves to the other side of the anthill and JP spots a beautiful old cow for the taking. Gavin edges into position. He locks onto the buffalo, takes his time, and then fires. The shot is good, but the herd turns to make a run for it, and Gavin's buffalo is with them. I move out of cover and look to take my own buffalo, but the herd is on the move, sending clouds of dust rising through the heat haze, and a shot is most definitely not on. We head in closer. As the herd moves, circling, anxious, I can't get a shot at all. As the herd moves on, we decide against giving chase. As responsible hunters, we can't be taking pot shots at a moving herd of the most dangerous animals on the planet. The herd is gone and we head back to look for Gavin's buffalo. But this is not a time to relax. OK. Gavin made a pretty good shot. Uh, the cow should be back there. We tried to get another shot, but I couldn't quite see the shoulder of the other cow. Anyway, the herd's moved on here, probably about 100 yards ahead of us. We're going to go back, make sure Gavin's cow's down, and then we're going to follow the herd. We look for a blood trail amongst the bush. But with such a big herd all the running and trampling the ground, spots of blood can be easily churned into the soil and hidden from view. Now we're pretty sure it's down, but this is the most dangerous time in buffalo hunting. If we have, we've lost sight of the animal, so until we catch sight of it again and it's down, we've got to assume it's injured and it's on its feet. The trackers are on it, and we're locked and loaded, so hopefully it's down, but you can never take too many precautions. We look over the area with a proverbial fine tooth comb, but it isn't easy. OK, so Gavin shot from an anthill, which is 116 yards from here. Uh, this here is the impact of the bullet striking the ground. Now, it's done either one of two things. Either gone straight through and out the other side, which means the blood trail we're going to be looking for is somewhere along here, or he's uh, pulled his shot and missed it completely. JP said he saw a cow at the back, you know, that's struggling to keep up. Now it could either be an old cow or it could be one that's been hit by this shot here. So hopefully we're going to find some sign and get on the trail. If not, we'll just get back into the herd. But uh, yeah, got a bit of work to do yet. Okay, so as you can see, we found blood here. There's not much of it and it's dried pretty quick. But it looks deep and red, so we're hopeful it's made a, a good heart-lung area shot. But heading off in this direction, so we better get on the trail. We move quickly through the long grass to ensure the cow doesn't get away. Sure enough, it isn't long before we find a small group broken off from the main herd. With it, Gavin's cow. Hit hard, but still standing. We stay hidden behind the long grass, and Gavin gets into position for his shot. He fires, and the small group makes a dash for it. We move out of cover and into the open. The cow is down, but the other buffalo are still nearby. We are now in a highly dangerous situation, as we move through the little or no cover, keeping watch for the small group of dangerous and nervous buffalo. If they turn and head for us, we'll be in trouble. Still charged with adrenaline, we find Gavin's cow down and out for the count, behind a small patch of long grass. As we stand over the beautiful cow, our nerves are still on edge as we remain cautious of the herd. Our hearts are racing. What an incredible hunt and the perfect old cow harvested for the centenary celebrations. To Gavin, congratulations. Thank That's you. That's your first buffalo, huh? My first buffalo, yeah. And what a beautiful cow this is. This has got to be, it's pretty old, looks like it's past breeding age. We've checked the udders, it's dry. Yeah. 
So this is exactly what we've been looking for today. Absolutely, you know, it, it looks like it's between 10 and 12 years old. Uh, I mean, it's dry as you can see. Yeah. Um, we've worked with carefully glassed. I mean, we had the experience of JP with us to tell us, listen, you know, that's the cows that he wants to take off the, the estate. But what a stalk, though. Oh. The wind is changing, the herd moving in different yeah. directions. They didn't make it easy for us today. No, absolutely they're not. And each time when we pushed it, it was then the whole herd was all overlooking. I mean, there wasn't yeah. a direction we couldn't, you know, fortunate uh, with these big anthills, uh, it just worked that we could stalk in behind that. Uh, and with the stalk, you know, coming through the little river bend, weren't perfect. It and here, here they are. Yeah. Just so, anthills, the locals call them montagna, with mountains, because there are no mountains here. This is as flat as the eye can see, and it's the only elevated position you've got for miles around. So Gavin managed to get up on top of one, nice and steady, took a perfect shot, quartering on straight in the engine room. So we're only halfway through the day though, Gavin. This is only one yeah. of two that we've got to harvest today, so we've still got some work to do. Gavin takes great pride in loading his first ever buffalo onto the truck and I can see it's been an emotional hunt for him. He's an accomplished hunter, but this is an achievement he'll never forget. He most definitely has a great story to tell the boys on his return home and retain his hero status in the Ingram household. Stay tuned to Team Wild TV for part two of our epic Mozambique buffalo hunt. Can we achieve our goal of taking two Cape buffalo in just one day? Hit the subscribe button and find out tomorrow on Team Wild TV. To build your African hunting adventure of a lifetime, visit andunahuntingsafaris.co.za.